Hi there, viewers. Today, I'm joining a conversation with author H. Max Ela, the author of Blowback, and other book that he has written. And it's a pleasure to have Max on the show today. Welcome on the show, Max. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to finally have you on English Literature. It is. Yeah, that's great. So, Max, could you tell us about your book, Blowback? How does it come about? I mean, what inspired you to write Blowback? Well, Blowback is the first in a series of books in what I call the Cadillac Holland Mystery Series. So okay. It's about a state police detective in the years immediately following Hurricane Katrina. There were so many issues with going wrong with the city now um, that I wanted to figure out a way to express and address those issues um, without trying to be those people who writes a book, you know, trying to be an expert on the subject. So I just incorporate issues. Each book is built around some specific issue mm -hmm. um, with the city's recovery. Blowback was about the lack of manpower that the city had. Mm -hmm. They lost almost a third of their police department immediately after Hurricane Katrina, and they still haven't fully recovered. Oh, wow. That sounds very intriguing. I love the sound of that. And I also want to ask you, for readers who haven't read Blowback yet, without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect picking up the book? Uh, the central character, is his actual name is Cooter Holland. He was named after his father's hometown. Mm. Um, but he winds up with a Cadillac from his boss. Meet, during Hurricane Katrina, in the immediate aftermath, almost all the police cars in the police department were destroyed because they were traveling in brackish water, salt water. Mm. Um, so the city went into one of the local Cadillac dealerships and took all of their cars to use for patrol cars. And he winds up with one of those, and that gives him his nickname. Oh, wow. Uh, and he has been, his military service and other kind of secret service that he'd done before he came to be a policeman involved tracking down terrorists and unsavory characters around the world. So mm -hmm. the police department uses him basically to try and track down fugitives. And that's where this first story starts, is trying to find a guy that the police inadvertently, well, the prosecutors inadvertently released um, when he was still suspected of murder. That's quite amazing. I love the sound of that. Then, Max, I also see that you have a book titled The Blue Garden which is a second book in the series to blow back. You know, without giving much information away again, could you tell us a bit about what we'll expect picking up Blue Garen following on from the fourth series? Yeah. Blue Guru starts the actual story arc. Uh, Blowback's more of a introductory novella. It takes place a couple of years before Blue Guru and the books that immediately follow Blue Guru. Mm -hmm. Um the title for that comes from a Louisiana tradition. There was a monster supposedly in the woods that everyone told their kids they'd send them out in the woods. The Rougarou would get them. Um, in this particular case, the suspect in a rather gruesome murder is a pit bull that somebody has died a particularly deep shade of blue. So that becomes the Blue Guru. And the thing is, the person that he killed uh, is particularly unpopular in town. Nobody really cares that he's dead. Uh, he, the police chief of detectives allows Cooter to, or Cadillac to pursue mm. the case, um, kind of as a exercise. Um, so he's got to decide whether or not the dog was the actual murderer or if it was used by somebody else to be the murder weapon, or if it was just a really good judge of character. Oh, wow. That's great. I really, really love the sound of these books and they really sound quite interesting to me. Now, Max, I want to ask you, you know, as authors, we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of our works. I'm curious to know your opinion about criticism. How do you react to negative criticism of your book, if you've ever had one in time past? I've had a little bit of negative here and there. Oh. Um, sometimes you take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes I've had one that I had to fight back actually against Um because the person that was leaving the review was frankly an idiot. Um, <laughs> well, they were trying to argue that members of the military never joined the police department. Oh, and it was like, so how do you, how are you enjoying your visit to our planet? Oh, and, uh, that the military 
probably at least half, maybe two thirds of some police departments are made up of military veterans. It is part of the problem with the police in the United States is that militarization of what should be a much more peaceful force. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite good. I understand yeah, that. But you in know. general, I don't get that many negative reviews. Hmm. Well, that's great. And I understand that readers understand and interpret books in different perception according to them. Right. Yeah. And I'm also curious, Max, to know if you experience any challenges while writing your book. If there is any, could you share with us the challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame it? My challenges, I don't have that many because I pick my fights really well. Uh, oh. As I say, each book covers some aspect of the city's recovery. Um, and also, I built very strong characters from the beginning mm -hmm. is that I know my characters inside and out. I know where they were born. I know where they went to high school. I never discuss it in the books, but I know so much about my characters that I both know what they will do in a situation. Oh. And, and I can trust, I can trust them to tell me what to do in those times when I'm kind of having a writer's block. In fact, in blue guru, the characters ganged up against me and changed the actual murderer. Oh, wow. But you have to be open to that. Mm. Now, Max, would you love to tell us a bit about the Ted book, Can't Stop the Funk? That one deals with the gentrification um, of New Orleans and the very concerted efforts that were made and are still being made to move a poorer population out of the city and deny them neighborhoods of their own. Oh. Before the storm, there were four or five different, very firmly established neighborhoods. These are the people that live in these neighborhoods. <clears throat> Some of them had lived there for four or five generations. Their parents had oh. built houses, and oh. now they're being squeezed out by people that are moving town and fixing up houses and charging more and more for them. Mm. One of the neighborhoods just out of the French Quarter called the Treme is famous for the amount of music and culture that it's given to the city and is now being settled by people who are paying a million dollars for houses that before the storm sold for $75,000. Oh. The people that lived in those neighborhoods can't afford to live in the neighborhoods anymore. Oh, wow. And that's gradually squeezing culture back out of the city. Oh, that's quite great to know. Now, apart from the book series in Blowback, do you have any other works you've altered or currently working on? There was, following um, Can't Stop the Funk, mm. there was Ghosts and Shadows, which kind of got into more of the character's background that his past kind of catches up with him. That was then followed with Parrish the Thought that took the character out of New Orleans um, at, some, at a, the request of someone he knew in New Orleans to try and solve what was suspected to be a homicide and turned into something just incredibly worse. Mm. That it, that particular one started dealing with child brides, which is a huge mm. international issue. Um, but in, in New Orleans, not New Orleans, but in the United States, um, it's almost an embarrassingly bad problem. Oh. Between the year 2000 and 2010, there were two 10-year-old girls married to adult men in the state of Tennessee. Wow. And the laws allow for it. It's, it's wow. legal. Wow. Um, and then the last book that I've written so far is Everybody Pays, which involves the journals of a um, mobster who comes back to town that nobody wants the journals to get out because it has the names of all kinds of people that have dealt with them in the past that don't want that exposed. Oh. Well, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot to take in. And I love the, yeah. I like the sound of that. It really sounds quite interesting. Well, it's taken me seven years to get this far. Wow. That's a lot. That's a great job. Now, Max, I also want to ask you, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? What are the challenges you've encountered in terms of marketing your books? What are the mediums you've utilized so far in promoting your books? 
Well, I belong to a what's called a hybrid publisher. It, it's called Indies United. That it's made up entirely of independent authors, self-published authors that use collective marketing, collective everything mm. to uh, push their products. That if I put a book out, then all of the other authors will publicize it on their websites. I publicize their books on my website, yeah. and it's the force of social media that kind of moves things forward. Yeah. Um, independent marketing is hit and miss. Um, so I've enjoyed having this kind of collective thing and the advice of others. Oh, wow. That's great to know. And I also want to ask you, is there anything that you love to share with the viewers about your books that we couldn't mention in this interview and I'd love the viewers to know? If you're looking for an honest view of New Orleans, um, it's a good place to start that it's actually been cited by a handful of people who are dealing with issues in New Orleans. It's like, well, in such and such book, you know, I learned this about things. So it's been kind of nice being that guy. Um, but it's, it's an unflinching look at the city mm. and it's still a lovely city. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. That's great. That's amazing. Now I want to ask you as a public author, Max, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? Like yours, what do they tell people in this category? Don't think about anybody else. Just get out and publish your book. <clears throat> Write your book, publish your book, and it will find a market. Oh, that's great. But try, try, trying to worry about all of that while you're writing it will keep you from ever finishing your book. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your hard advice. And I hope that viewers, including myself, would love to utilize it. And for viewers who would love to get a copy of Max H. Elias' book, I left a link in the description part of this interview where you can get a copy directly on Amazon. So thank you so much, Max, for accepting the invitation to be featured on Pinglish Literature. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This has been marvelous. Yeah.